Now Joe and I are just about to start assembling the bottom, the false bottom, for the jig of our total boat sport dory. Now I just want everybody to understand that this is not part of the dory, but it's only part of the jig. It's a very important part of the jig because it does a number of different things. It binds the molds together, the sections together so they don't wiggle when I'm building it. It does all kinds of different things. It's going to be made of three layers of 3 8 plywood, pretty much the cheapest plywood you can get your hands on here. And uh, like I say, this bottom can be taken off the jig and it, the jig can be used in different ways. But we need it here because we're going to laminate a bottom over it. So we want a nice stiff flat platform to laminate our bottom over the top of and this is going to do the trick. Now the next thing we're going to do is kind of mark it out here in a little bit different way. Let's have that drill, Joe. I've got some marks on the very corner of the molds where the garbage meet the bottom and what I'm going to do is just reach up underneath and drill a hole just about a half an inch outboard of those holes and then we're going to draw a line around here and cut it to shape. So this is what I'm up to right here right now. These holes are just to transfer the marks on the bottom to the top of the plywood. Now it's a very simple method and there's no real particular degree of accuracy needed here because I've added a half an inch when I drilled the hole outside the mark on the bottom. And I'm just going to drive some sheetrock screws down in the hole, not very deep. And uh, the hole is pretty large so the sheetrock screw isn't in there very tight. I'll be able to back them right out by hand very easily afterwards. Now I've got a little light batten here. I'm going to put it up against the screws like so and I'm going to push a lead weight up against it right here just to hold it because I can't manage all those things at once. Now push that in just a little bit more, Joe, just like that. Okay, we're all set. Now I'm going to take a pencil and I'm just going to draw a line around inside the batten and that's just a line to saw right here. Now I'm going to take a saber saw after I draw these lines and just cut the excess right off with a saber saw right in position right here without even moving the piece of plywood off the jig. I'm doing exactly the same thing on the other side as I did on the first side. I've got the sheetrock screws in place there and I just stretch the batten around and hold it down nice and neatly. You know, it fares the line for me just like I would fare it on a drawing board or on a loft floor. But uh, it's not really that important because, like I say, I'm a half an inch at least outboard of where I have to be and there's going to be a lot of this material removed afterwards. I'm just going to remove the batten and then we're going to back the screws out by hand here because they're not in the holes very tightly. All right, let's slide it your way a little bit, a couple inches, like that. All right. I'm getting started with the saber saw here and you'll notice that Joe and I had slid the piece over sideways because that way when I saw past the molds I won't have the saber saw sawing into the molds, that's all that was for. Now I can saw along quite a bit here and I'm able to actually climb right up on top of the thing. Look how stable and strong the whole jig is here and uh, you know you don't feel it wiggling or doing anything wrong and after I stabilize it even more by fastening this temporary bottom off to it, it'll be quite a rig here. Keeping the saber saw on the line sometimes is just a little tiny bit tricky, especially if it's vibrating a little bit. And if it is, sometimes you'll see me use my thumb to stabilize the stern end of the saber saw. It makes it a lot easier to keep it on the line. So now Joe and I are going to drag the piece back over into its proper position and we're going to just hang it right over the end of that mold just by an eighth of an inch or so and uh, I've got a sliding square here set at five inches. I'm striking a line across the end there at five inches because that's the length of the scarf that I'm going to cut. Well that's the first piece of our three layer false bottom right there and you can see it's not long enough to make the length of the boat so we're going to have to add on to another piece like that and we're going to scarf them together with a five inch scarf. So this is the position that it's going to be in we're just going to roll it over like so and I've already drawn a five inch line from the edge the same as the first line and now what we're going to do is we're just going to fasten the two pieces together just beyond this line 
I'll hold the two pieces together and maybe I'll stick another couple in there. Now that that piece is secure with the sheetrock screws, I'm gonna put some spacers under it up here and tap them in like this because these pieces of plywood are very curved. We kind of trained them that way, just laying against the wall there uh, to make this bottom. Now, now it's sitting there just the way I want it and I'm just gonna whip this right off with an electric plane and I'll have two five inch scarfs at the same time. Now, I put a nice black magic marker line across the end of these two sheets. One of them uh, is in the corner right there and it's marking the end of that sheet and it's also marking the length of this scarf right here. So I can see that line disappear as I plane as I get down there really close. I've also put another line right across here with a black magic marker and when I plane that down you're going to see when I get into that right there and I'm going to take almost all of it off till I come right to a feathered edge on both of these edges and stop at this pencil line right here. I'm going to use an electric plane to do it. As I get started here, I don't have the planer adjusted too aggressively. I'm just kind of getting used to the motion and making sure that I know exactly what's going on here in all respects. And uh, once I get going, I'll start turning the planer adjustment a little bit different, a little bit different, and cutting in a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And I just want to make sure as I do that, that the planer is ejecting the chips properly so that it doesn't jam up because I don't want to keep attending that. You know, the planer has got to eject properly, especially when you're dealing with plywood because you're dealing with multiple kinds of grains here. You're planing across the grain at the same time as you're planing with the grain and a lot of planers will just jam right up. But this little thing is working fantastic for me here and uh, it doesn't take much effort to do this. You know, I really don't need to break out a straight edge or do anything afterwards to check and see whether or not it's nice and flat or not. You can feel that right underneath the planer, just as if you were using a hand plane. But with a hand plane, it would be very difficult to remove this amount of material. You'd be banging into it, it'd be moving all over the place. With power, you know, you don't really have to hold down what you're planing that hard because you're not banging into it at all. It's very simple and very effective. Power is the way to go when you need it. So well, that takes care of that. Now, we just brush it off here a little bit. So there are our finished scarfs right there, and they came out pretty nice. Uh, it was very little effort really at all. You can see the lines of the plywood right here, the glue lines going fairly straight across. I mean, all those little zigzag things like that are really kind of imperfections in the grain of the plywood. So these are really nicely done. And what I'm going to do now is take the lead off up in here. Now we're just going to flip it over into position like so. I'll sneak it right up close to that black line but not cover it like that. Now I've got a couple of pieces of scrap lumber here. I'm going to stick one of them over here and one here like that and a couple of small sheetrock screws and I'm just going to pump these screws through the bottom of the plywood up into those blocks. Now I've got the blocks far enough over here so I can taxi by here with the saber saw. So this should work out pretty well. Make sure you use a short enough screw when you're doing something like this because you don't want it to come up through the top and screw your hand down to the block. And believe me, it's been done many, many times. Now I'm just going to put one screw in the top here just to stop it from sliding around. Right down into the station, like that. Now, just like the first piece, I'm going to drill two holes up through the bottom next to the mold so we can put our sheetrock screws down in the top. Now I'm going to take a batten one more time and stretch it around the bottom there. Joe's going to hold it right in the corner there real nice. I'm going to pull it up against this screw and just hold it down with my thumb. And I'm just letting it dangle off there nice and straight because I don't want the thing to be pulled in too far and make this piece too small. Too small wouldn't be good. Too big is perfectly fine. So there we go. That's the line for me to cut right there. Now we're going to take the bat and put it on this side. I'm going to slide it inside this clamp up forward here just to make it nice and easy. Joe's got his end. I got my end. And there we go. Draw that up to here. And right through. 
like that. Now we'll just put the batten away, take a saber saw, and cut the excess off. Now it's pretty simple to do, but you do want to make sure that you slide it over sideways, like I had said before, so you don't cut into the molds. Like I said before, the block is fastened down far enough inboard so I can taxi alongside of it with the saber saw. So that completes the first layer right there. Now we're going to use that first layer to trace the other two layers out, actually. We're going to place the other two pieces up on top of there, trace them out with this piece, and uh, we can scarf them first if we want, but probably what we'll do is cut them out and then get them to be the right size and then coordinate them with each other and cut the scarfs. Same exact way we did it before. We used the electric plane. It was quite easy to do. You know, we drilled up through the end pieces to, to get them to be the right size and used the batten to trace the pieces out and all the same exact procedure that we did on the first layer except the first layer acted as a pattern for the other two layers. I didn't have to go up underneath or anything else and like I say it's cut out a little big. After they've been glued together later on we're going to reach up underneath and transfer those exact pencil lines at the corners of where the bottom meets the garbage plank and then we're going to flip the thing over and put a batten on it and cut it to the exact right size and then we're going to actually taper it off to the angle of the garbage plank. So there's a little bit of work left to do to that false bottom, but you know, that false bottom is really important to us and important to this jig, and especially because of the way I'm going to build the boat. I'm not going to build the boat in exactly the way a, an early one was built. It's not going to be traditionally built down here. It's going to have a composite bottom made up of layers with carbon fiber between the layers and over the garbage seams. And the garbage aren't going to be fastened to the bottom. It's going to be glued together only. The other thing that's really important about this false bottom is after it's shaped and in position properly, it's like having a chine log in a skiff. You know, I'm not forced to fasten the garbage plank right off to the bottom, and that's the only place I can fasten it, you know. I can fasten alongside of it into that plywood, right? And it's all on a temporary basis. Basically, what I'm trying to accomplish here is gluing the garbage planks off to the bottom planks without any fastenings whatsoever. And then I can shape it from there, I can cover it with carbon fiber, and I can go on with another layer just like that, and another layer after that if I want. So, you know, it's going to be incredibly strong, the bottom itself of this boat, and the garbage, and the seam between the garbage planks and the bottom. There they are, the three layers of the false bottom of our Total Boat Sport Dory. Now it's made of uh, 3 8 plywood here, about the cheapest 3 8 plywood money can buy, and that's okay because it's not part of the boat. It's part of the mold like I've been telling you, and uh, it can be used for this type of building, or it can be taken off actually, and, uh, and the molds can be used in a different manner. So that's pretty neat, I think, but uh, I was showing you the scarfs. We had made one scarf right here first at uh, station number four, the first layer. Then we scarfed the second layer up here at station number two, and the last scarf was made right here at station number three. Now, I didn't really have to work at that awfully hard. It took a few minutes to make them, but, uh, you know, without uh, having to use a hand plane to uh, tune it up or anything, it went, came along pretty easy, and uh, I think it looks pretty good, so we're pretty happy about that. And uh, the next thing for us really to do here is to glue the three layers together. Now I'm just going around checking it at the scarfs right here to see if they lay down nice and tight. And it looks great to me. So we're ready to glue it and we're going to use uh, epoxy glue in between the layers. And uh, that'll be uh, fail safe and uh, we're ready to go. So the next thing I wanted to say to you is uh, it's actually an announcement. We're going to be at the Harishoff Marine Museum on October the 19th, I'm going to be speaking at the uh, lecture series there, and uh, the doors open at 6 p.m., so I hope you all get there, and uh, it'll be fun. I'll get to talk to you about what I want to talk to you about, and you guys can get to talk to me about what you want to talk to me about. So uh, let's get together on that one.